I want to just speak a little bit this morning about the anointing. The need to be anointed. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing that takes what you say and either puts life into it, brings clarity to it, brings understanding, shows that it doesn't matter how intellectual you are, it doesn't matter how long you've been saved, it doesn't matter this or that, but God will break the word of that His word opened to you, that you'll be able to receive from it, that you'll be able to grow, you'll be able to develop, you'll be able to be protected from the hand of the enemy, that you'll hear that still small voice saying, don't go that way, go this way. I believe the anointing is one of the most powerful things or one of the most powerful subjects that we can speak about in this hour that we're living in. If ever there's a time that the church of a living God needs to be anointed, it's today. We're living in an era when it's a lot to do with education, and I'm not against education. I believe that all things are very, very important. I believe that we need to study the Word of God. I believe that we need to understand and, and, and realize what God's saying. That it's the anointing that breaks open the Word of God. It's the anointing that reveals the hidden truths that are in the Word of God. It's the anointing that comes like a hammer. And where you may in your mind have a stronghold, even wrong thinking, wrong doctrine, wrong philosophy, wrong opinion, that the anointing can come through like a great hammer and whack that thing and broke it open and set you free. The better there's a day that we need to be set free has to be the hour that we're living in. We can have education, we can have all that, but we need the anointing. The anointing. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 2 that there was a day in history of humanity when God opened up heaven and poured out His Spirit upon this nation, upon the world. A great outpouring of God's presence came. That was the day that God anointed His church. God always had a church, whether they call it synagogue or whether they call it this or that. God always had a people. But on the day of Pentecost, was the day his church got anointed. What an amazing day that was. The anointing will change your life. It will take a drunkard and make him into a champion. It will take a weak person and make them strong. It will take a defeated person and make him a warrior. It will take a loser and make him a champion. It's the anointing the anointing that will change your life. It'll change the way you act. It'll change the way you speak. You speak with an authority. You speak with an emboldenment. I believe the anointing brings the Word of God to life. The anointing makes the Word of God come alive. The anointing causes you, you to act Speak and think differently. The anointing will also cause you to see things differently. To be able to see a circumstance or a situation. When people around you look at it and say, ah, that's impossible. When they look and think, man, that's the end. You start to see things a little bit differently. Peter and John in Acts chapter 3, after the Spirit of God came on the church and anointed the church, we know that Peter stood in the midst and he, and he began to speak and he said, these men are not drunk as you suppose. 3,000 people got born again as a result of that. But now we see Peter and John, they're going to the temple to pray. 
Here's this man that's been laid there daily at the gate. I wonder in my mind, and I've said this many times, I wonder how many times they actually saw that man at the gate begging for alms. I wonder how many times, because at that particular time they hadn't been anointed, they hadn't received the Holy Spirit, they didn't have the power of God, that they did the best they could. Friend, we can do the best we can And they might have been doing the best they could with what they had. And they gave him some money. But this day, it was a different day. This day, it was a totally different day. As they looked at this cripple, they saw in the natural the impossibility, but now the anointing that came upon them not many days before, kicks in. And they begin to say something. He says, silver and gold I do not have. That was my best before. That was the best I could do before. But I want to tell you something's changed. You might be looking at me for silver and gold. You might be looking for what I used to do or what I, the best I could have done. But I don't have that anymore. I've got something better. Silver and gold I do not have, but such as I have. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, arise and be healed. And we know that people, if we know this guy just got dramatically set free. You see, it's the anointing that will cause you to see things differently. It's the anointing that kicks in that will cause you to rise up. And sometimes when you start to speak, you will literally shock yourself. Is that true, Keith? Because when the anointing comes on you, you start to say things. You start to do things and you start to act differently. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. And I'm just going to add some words. And if we've got that up on the the screen. I believe this is what the anointing does to you. And this is the confidence. The assurance. The boldness. Which we have in Him. Friend, you've got to have the assurance. You've got to have the boldness. You've got to know. And only the, only the Spirit of God can reveal this to you. Only the anointing can break through the, 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 the mindsets that are in our mind. The things before we were saved that were so indelibly printed in our thinking. The things there that, that caused us to be weak and failures. Things that caused us to be negative. All of a sudden, this is the confidence. Friend, we have to be, we have to have an assurance. We have to have a boldness in Him. We are sure. Friend, you have to be sure. It's not a hope. It's not just, I think it might, no, you've got to be sure. That if you ask anything, you've got to be sure. We don't want to just lay hands on people thinking, oh my God, this, this isn't going to work. God, this, this is, we're just going through a ritual. How many people know we can go through rituals? We can do things. We can, because it's the way we do it. It's a bit like cutting the end off the lamb roast. People through the centuries still do it. But the original lady did it because she didn't have a pan big enough to fit the whole thing in. And so it becomes a ritual that this is how you do it. Even the butchers will do it for you today. We have to be sure that if we ask anything, 
Make any request. Make any request. Don't limit yourself on what you ask God for. According to His will. According to His will. Or in other words, in agreement with God's plan. He listens and He hears us. And if, if since we positively know that He hears us, that makes your prayer life a lot different. Oh, hallelujah, praise you, Jesus. No, He's listening to every word we utter. And if you know, if you know with a positive assurance that when we stand and we lift up our hearts to God in prayer, that He hears us and He's listening to us. He's not saying, oh, here's Neil again. He's not saying, oh, here's that one again. He's not saying like some people might say, you asked for that last week. No, knock and keep on knocking. Ask and keep on asking. Amen. Since we positively know that He listens to us and whatever we ask, we also know. Amen? With settled and absolute knowledge. I'm telling you, what I'm just reading to you right now will change the way you think. It'll change your prayer life. It'll change your expectancy with settled and absolute knowledge that we have, that we have, everybody say have, granted to us as our now possession. <laughs> as if what I've just asked for is already in my hand. It's not out there somewhere. Oh, Satan's withholding it. Yes, yes, yes. There's one story about that in the Bible. <laughs> but know that whatever you ask is absolutely now in your possession. You have it, amen. You have it. <laughs> Granted to us as our now possession, the request we made of Him. Let me just read it to you. I'll go a little bit faster. This is the confidence, the assurance, the boldness which we have in Him. As, I'm so, sorry, as we have in Him, we are sure that if we ask anything, make any uh, request according to His will, in agreement with God's plan. How many people know God's plan? He listens to and hears us. And if since we positively know that He listens to us in whatever we ask, we also know with settled and absolute knowledge that we have granted to us as our now possessions the request made of Him. I think that's worth a bit of a amen, brother. The anointing brings about a confidence and boldness even when things look impossible. You don't go to buy groceries thinking maybe they may not let me have it. Anybody ever go to the grocery shop like that? But that's how we go to God. They don't go and buy groceries thinking maybe they may not let me have them. Boldness says I'm going to the store to get what's advertised. 
I've got a confidence and a boldness. If I can just change that around, I'm going to God to get what He says I can have. How many people know that God is more reliable than coals and woolies? Eh? Eh? Come on, I know, come on, I know this is silly, but you know what? We got more confidence in coals and woolies than we have in God. When it comes to prayer, when it comes to asking Him something that's difficult. Yeah, amen. Now, when I go, I'm going to pick on coals. When I go to coals, I don't go with a Mack truck and get everything because I might not need everything. But I might need tomatoes. And I might just come out of coals with one little bag. But that's what I go for, and that's what I get. You might not need financial. There's a lot of millionaires in the place that, that need a healing. They don't need money. They need healing. A lot of people that don't need healing that need money. <laughs> but so if you want tomatoes, you go and get tomatoes. You need healing, you go and get healing. You stand before God and you believe for your healing, you believe for your health, you believe for strength, you believe for this, you believe for that. You know, you, then you just go through the little checkout. But then I've seen other people, I'm walking through there with my little bag of tomatoes and I see another lady and she's got two trolleys full. And then she actually went for her monthly shopping or whatever it was. I don't know if that makes any sense to you. But you go just believing that you're going to be able to get what they said you can get. How would you be if, you, if they advertised tomatoes and you went in there with no tomatoes? They've got seven different varieties. <laughs> you go to get something today and there's, there's 50 different types of it. Anybody knows? <laughs> In Acts 10 38, it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Why? Because God was with him. Jesus was anointed. Jesus needed the anointing. Jesus needed the power of God. So I want you to have a look with me in Luke chapter 4. The Bible says here in, in uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 14, we know that Jesus was sent into the wilderness and was tempted by the devil and so forth. Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him, of him went out through all the surrounding region. He taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. Verse 16 says, So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. He came to the place where he had been brought up. Came to the place where he had most probably spent most of his life. People knew him. Hello, Jesus. How are you, Jesus? How are you going, Jesus? They knew him, Jesus the carpenter. They knew him as Jesus the carpenter. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. So it's just like little Jesus now, he's 30. Walks in again like he did most surely every Sabbath. No different, no, no, no different in the natural. It was this custom? I want you to catch that.
He went into the Sabbath the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And they handed him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, Isaiah 61. And he starts to speak these words. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captors, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to reclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it back to the attendants and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. There was something different about this guy. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. In other words, Jesus knew something had happened to him, but the people there, so they all bore witness to him and marveled at the glorious words which proceeded out of his mouth. These words were most probably spoken many, many times from the book of Isaiah. But now he speaks it as a man anointed. See, you can, you, can, you can hear a song and somebody can sing a song and it's a song. But then somebody can sing a song and it's anointed and it will pierce your heart. It will touch you. It will do something on the inside of you. It's the anointing. It's the anointing. You can preach a message. I've preached some of Billy Graham's messages. As a young pastor, did, it, did my best, made the altar call, nobody even moved. The anointing. The anointing. Friend, I've got one little phrase, get anointed. Get anointed. But now he stands up this same boy, this guy that has been coming in and out of this church now for year on year and year. Now they hand him the book. He opens it up to this particular spot, Isaiah 61. And he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And all of a sudden, these words are no longer just, just words that I've heard many times. All of a sudden, they're carrying something. They're carrying something. See, if you want... If you want to, I don't misunderstand me. We get the people knock on the door and they want to share scriptures with you and they want to do this and they want to give you a book and they want to do this. But they don't carry the anointing. We've got to be anointed in every area of our aspect of our life. The anointing, our prayer life, our, our worship, our presence, whatever it is. And it's just being filled with the Holy Ghost. Because He has anointed me to preach the gospel. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives. And, and I'm, I'm, listen, I'm reading this and I'm saying, God, what's the difference between reading it in Isaiah and reading it here? What's the difference between these people that read that over and over and over and over? Now they're listening to a man stand up and quote something that was written many hundred years before. Now they're, they're listening to something, but all of a sudden it says that as he spoke, these people were amazed. They were amazed because now this, these words are carrying something. It's the anointing, amen. It's the anointing that will break the yoke. This day, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. People wanted it, got mad with him because he started to speak with them. They cast him out. They threw him out. But he finds himself, he goes to another town. He finds himself in another synagogue. And he walks in there. And there was a person there that, that's tormented by a demon. And this demon-possessed man runs up to him and looks at him and says, What are you doing here? Have you come to torment us? Oh, shakabundi. 
Would be to God that the church started tormenting the devils instead of tolerating them and dressing them up and calling them something that they're not. Amen? I'm going to get real excited just because I'm preaching so good. <laughs> what have you done? What are you doing here? Have you come to torment us? He just looked at him and told that demon to come out of him. Get out of him. And that demon obeyed. Amen. Would have gone there all the time. Jesus is now anointed. Friends, can I encourage you to get a fresh anointing? How do you get a fresh anointing? How do you get a fresh anointing? I want to tell you, friends, when the music plays, and all is stripped away. And there's nothing else. Just the enough. And you lift up your hand. And you lift up your heart. And you start to cry out to your God. God, more than anything else, I want to bring glory to your name. And you start to just let your heart go out to God. And the presence of God starts to come in a fresh way. God starts to stir that anointing. You know, what's happened today, many times we're so busy trying to solve the problems and find time to spend with the problem solved. God is so busy running around trying to fix everything up. All I know is this. The Lord said, I will build my own. I'm going to build my own church. I'll build it. That's why that song, even this morning, the things in that song there that we sing, that God have your way in my life. Friends, get a fresh anointing. You go back to the marketplace, to your work, to home, school, go back anointed. Go back anointed. Let the anointing get around our lives. I want you to have a look with me in the book of Acts chapter 4. Anybody believe this is a good book? You should read it now and then. Acts chapter 4. Verse 8. It says, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for the good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. This is a stone which was rejected by you builders. He's not pulling any punches here, is he? Which, was, which has become the chief cornerstone. Now is there salvation in any other? For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they'd been with Jesus. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could not say anything against it. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, 
Peter, anointed. You, anointed. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John, really what they saw was the anointing. That's what people need to see, isn't it? The anointing. The, no the anointing, the presence of God. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John, really what they saw was the anointing. The anointing that produced boldness. You see, people need to see the anointing on your life. And the anointing will give you power and boldness. That will help the uneducated and the untrained. The anointing will help the uneducated and the untrained. When I first got saved, I was reading Good News for Modern Man Bible, stick version, little stick people all the way through it. People told me that I shouldn't read it, that it wasn't spiritual. I want to tell you there's enough Holy Ghost in that book to get hold of this old fellow. And as I read that, I saw in the book about water baptism. I went to the minister of the church that we were going to at the time, a denominational church, and I said, Sir, I said, I've not only been saved a few weeks. This man had been to university for five years and been to seminary for another six. He understood the Word of God. He knew the Word of God. And so here's a man that's never been to church in his life, basically. Might have been to a few weddings or something like that. I've never been in church. Walking up to this man saying, Sir, I believe, as I read the book, that I should get water baptized as a believer. He said to me, were you sprinkled as a child? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, that's all you need to do. And I said, thank you. I said, I was deceived. I thought I had to get water baptized. But as I continued to read the book, I found out that it was only not on one page, but it was on many pages. It was actually on the Kellogg's Cornflake page. Sprinkled with sugar, immersed with milk. When God's on your case, whatever you read, all of a sudden becomes spiritual. <laughs> and so I went back to him and said, Sir, I believe. Five times I went to him. On the fifth time, he looked at me with indignation. Look, th look, this man is a beautiful man. Honestly, a beautiful man. I love him to bits. I love him to bits. I'm not trying to pull him down. Lovely man. But he looked at me with, <clears throat> you ever, ever had one of them? <clears throat> I've got an itch I can't scratch. <laughs> he said, all right, I'll do it. And immediately, immediately out of my innermost being, I said, no thanks. And he looked at me and he said, You've asked me six, five times and eventually I said, okay, I'll do it. And when I say I'll do it, you say, no thanks, what's going on here? I said, I don't want an unbeliever doing it. The anointing will help an uneducated and an untrained person. We sing, all I need is you. We need the package. You listen to, you've got voyages with packages. <laughs> but I want to tell you, this book has got the greatest package deal you could ever have. He said, I'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with power. The Godhead will get involved with you. When you pray, I will listen to whatever you pray and whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. There's so much that God offers us. There's so much that God has for us. There's so much. So much. I want to just say this again. 
the anointing that produces boldness, that anointing over your life, that anointing will help you, whether you're uneducated and untrained, to hear from God. And he'll lead you and he will guide you. Amen? You believe that today? Finished on time. Amen. Father, there would be some people here like the disciples that needed a fresh outpouring over their life. The struggle of life, the busyness of life, the pressures of life that get around us. and We're so busy, 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 busy that we really don't have time to spend with you. There are people here, my God, that they have a ritual but it lacks the anointing. We can do things that seem right. But there's different needs in this place. But one thing we all need is we need a fresh anointing. We need a fresh outpouring on our lives. I'm just going to ask us all to stand to our feet this morning. And I'm going to ask you today that I can't remember the words of that song. That's why I had to get the words before. But Lord, I want to be totally yours. I don't want my will to be done. I want your will to be done in my life. I don't want to listen to the enemy's plan. I want to listen to your plan. Just lift up your hands in this house. Lift up your hearts to God. Here I am. Here I am. Heart wide open to you, Lord. Will you reach down and make adjustments in my life that need to be made that I can be better used by you, for you, with you, through you, in you? Can I swallow my pride? Can I swallow my pride? Can I put it down? That I become transparent before you, Lord? I confess this morning, Lord, I need you. I need a fresh outpouring of your Spirit upon my life. Pressures of life, Lord, they get around you. Pressures. I need that fresh outpouring. I stand here on this altar today with my heart wide open to you. And friend, if you're in this place and you sense, sense God is talking to you, that you want to stand here as well, I'm just going to open this altar to you today. That you might be able to just come, stand in his presence. Stand in his presence. No fanfare. Just say, Lord, here I am. That you can, you can come. Come and stand. Come and stand. Stand before him. Stand in his presence.